Alright, you may recall that um, uh, there was a tab back here that the fender would normally mount. Stock tab that came out of flat tab that would normally hook over a stud back here. Of course, there was no room for it because of the hinge location. So I had to cut all that out. I'm going to come up with another um, locating point for this uh, back of the fender on the top side here. And what I did was, um, this is the, uh, there's two bolts that used to hold this on. And you remember I put some a plate here and then a stud. Uh, well, this for forward uh, locating point, I just cut out this metal on the fender and it exposed this point right here. So I've got a nice bolt up point here, nice strong spot. And what I'll do is, this is the bracket that's made out of 14 gauge. And this will slide up underneath the fender here and bolt down here and then I'll weld it, plug weld it through here. I'll show you, I've already got this one over here done. This one's already in place and you can see it's already plug welded through the top of the fender here and it's bolted down so now that's a solid connection right there. Okay so uh, with the grill support out of the way um, I've got this uh, lower valance uh, cut and tacked and also the lower fender cut and tacked so that it, it all fits together a little bit better. Uh, the unfortunate part is these tabs that it's supposed to bolt through. You can see uh, way down here there's a hole there but the hole that it lines up in the fender is way up here. So I've got to do something to remedy that situation so I can actually bolt these two pieces together. Also in the front there's a misalignment here. Um, over here it's not as bad. Um, yeah, it's a little off in the front. The rear one's the only one that's good over on this side, so I don't know what the, what the heck I was talking about. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to have to address that right now and um, before I get too far along with anything else. Okay, so I've got those uh, bolted in now. I've got a capture nut bolted or welded on the back side of this tab so that I can reach in and spin this in when the time comes. Uh, and then I also have just a nut and bolt set up here, redrilled those tabs. There's enough material there, fortunately, for me to redrill them. Same thing over here. So that's been dealt with. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but um, I had to do a little bit more work to these brackets here. Um, this is the bracket that I bolted the fender to. Um, what I had to do was, even though this was bolted here, here, and on top over here, it was flexible enough for this fender to still rotate quite a bit. So I got some um, uh, 40 thousandths wall, uh, three quarter inch tubing. I flattened it out here and then I flattened it out here to make a tab so that I could bolt it right to the radiator core support. Also, I had to connect this tab uh, to this lower piece here because this was just like, it would act like a hinge here basically. So in order to triangulate it a little bit, I put this uh, extra stob in here. The reason it's rounded over and the reason I just didn't extend this down is this is at an angle. That's why this is clearanced out here so I could get my fingers in here, get the nut started. And so this comes loops around the nut and plugs right into here and that makes this a little bit more substantial. So those are in there now. Um, uh, so I'm going to go on to um, working on the, the uh, bumper plates next, and uh, we'll see how they turn out. Okay, so the fenders, they still wanted to rotate just a bit, you know, uh, so I had to stabilize them so I can get rid of these body stands. Uh, and um, so what I did was, these may be temporary um, because some of the structure that I'll be adding down here will actually keep this, the fenders spread where they need to go because they'll be tied into this uh, roll pan in the front. But for the time being, I just need something to hold it. They may be in the way of the window mechanism, or excuse me, the, uh, the headlight door mechanisms. So they may have to go in the end. But for now, I've just got um, a piece of... Uh, 3 8 tubing flattened on both ends with a couple of uh, quarter 20 bolts and some lock nuts on the back side and it's attached to this um, with a bump or the frame rail and um, also what I've done here is I've got a plate that's uh, it's, I left one corner out of it so that this uh, rod that goes up here and substantiates this uh, hood latch mechanism can be uh, dismantled separately from this this bumper plate. So anyway, this bumper plate is the beginning of my bumper structure here. That's just three sixteenths. 
Okay, their rotation wasn't that wasn't the issue. What was the issue is these plates that I made they made made up. I kind of looked at it and said, maybe I need to extend this plate all the way up to here, and I'm like, ah, no, that's overkill. But guess what? If you look at that, I mean, you could see. I don't know, moving the camera too much here, but you can see there's a flex right here, and then basically what I did to remedy it over here is I just put a triangulated a gusset here, and now you can pretty much lean on this thing. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, you know, it's a uh, uh, excuse me, it's seventy thousandths uh, steel, so I figured, well, you know, it's all welded up solid and it's going in so many directions, it's probably really stout. But there was one weak point right here and uh it showed up so anyway i gotta take those brackets back off and uh, spiff them up a little bit more well it's turning into quite the contraption but it's finally stabilized um basically this part here was a little too flexible so now it's uh tied into the top ledge right across here so it really can't move anywhere anyway Hopefully that's the last iteration of that thing. Okay, so I'm having to figure out my own a bumper mounting system here because uh, this car didn't come with uh, bumper bumper mounts, and even if it did, I'd have to modify them quite a bit to get them all tucked in around all the stuff I've got going on in there right now. Um, anyways, I don't have them, so I'm going to start with my own bumps, bumper substructure. The first thing I'm doing is, is I'm going to uh, create my uh, bolt-up points, and I'm going to use uh, this 16-gauge um, steel. And I've got it folded over to where it kind of fits the contour of the inside of the bumper, drilled through. And then once I did that, I um, clamped this up using some cloth on the outside, some a rag, so that I didn't mar the, uh, the outside uh, chrome. Anyway, uh, once I did that, I torqued these down to distort, distort the metal so that it complied more with the shape in that one area. So I get a nice tight fit right there. Next, I'm going to put a gusset over here to pick up this uh, side bolt-up point. I have to do one for the other side the same way. And then right here also, I have to have a pickup point. And we'll move on from here. Okay, so now that I've got my plate here and I've got another plate over here, um, I've got a piece of inch and a quarter 090 wall uh, square tubing laid in and I'm just lightly tacking it in here. I'm not going to weld that. I don't want to transfer any heat to the actual bumper. I've got a little piece of exhaust gasket here just to put between here and then I'm cooling it off with um, an air hose just so I don't uh, ruin the chrome. I don't want any heat transfer into this bumper. But anyway. I'll pull it out of here and I'll weld it all up, but I got that side, and then uh, I'll get this side over here next. All right, so this is what the uh, bumper support looks like, welded up, cleaned up, um, and out of the bumper. Uh, we got to weld, weld the other one up uh, after this one, and we'll move on from there. Okay, so this is what uh, these uh, substructure pieces look like inside of the rear side of the bumper. Now I've got to get it up there and connect this uh, to the uh, frame rail extensions and we'll go on from there. All right, setting uh, the bumper up, the front bumper up uh, so that I can make the outriggers. So uh, I just clamped these um, Two by fours that I had notched that I was using to work on the bench, using the uh, work on the bumper on the bench, I should say. Um, I got it located, centered up. I got a jack underneath the roll pan because the roll pan has no support in the center, so it's sagging. So it was keeping these uh, these little bumperettes from rolling up and inside where they belong. So that tells me now where I can make some structure to bolt those two. And um, also, I have some temporary stops here uh, that are adjustable. Uh, one for a diagonal to keep it from shifting left and right, and two on the outriggers for distance. Uh, the body stands are uh, carrying most of the weight, uh, though, so just based on what I could discern from pictures, uh, I think I got it where it needs to go. Um, you know, it follows that top line pretty good. Uh, of course, you know, these things are never 100% perfect. 
um, because the stampings are a little bit this way and this way. So uh, that one looks like it's rolling downhill a little bit. I might tweak that up just a little bit before I put my outrigger on. We'll see. Anyway, um, getting ready to do the outriggers now. So uh, I got a little bit uh, ahead of myself saying that I was going to get to the, uh, you know, bumper extensions. Um, first thing I had to do is stabilize this thing because it wanted to rotate. And uh, so what I did was I made a piece that is a substitute piece for what's known as the dog bone, which your bumper rats or your bumper guards normally bolt to through these holes in the roll pan. So it's just a piece of one inch by one inch 049 wall some holes drilled in it um, and some t-nuts welded in and then it's bolted up from the bottom side here and then I took some 049 wall three-quarter inch tube and I flattened it out so that I can make a flange and I bolted it through my frame horn here as you can see with this uh, bumper bracket uh, cut out of the way it has three mounting points and then I still had some space that I could bolt something else to it so came down here and dropped these on and then bolted them through here and then I added some 70 thousandths um, excuse me 70 thousandths uh, steel here tabs and uh, just quarter 20 nuts and bolts through those through the bottom of the pan because I had cut away in order to clearance for this uh, condenser here I cut away all the attachment points that are normally on the back side of this roll pan so now everything's attached the bumper is attached to here the roll pan is attached to here so everything's been stabilized so that now I can do my outriggers and uh, that's the next step all right little trick I learned in big time stock car racing and, and when you've got a something like a tubing piece of tubing and you want to fit it up and it's in a awkward space and you've got different planes going on um, is you take a shorter piece of tube uh, than you need the same size of what you're going to use wrap it with this uh, pattern paper so you could slide this up and back as you trim it and you have a center line drawn on this piece here so that you can make once you get this rotated where you want it you could mark your center lines on this piece and also the distance right here so you could transfer all of this to a fresh piece of tubing and you can cut it out with these profiles and you don't have to waste a lot of time going back and forth and um, you know wasting a lot of tubing or cutting too much material out anyway um, let me just show you where this is going Right here, the um, the inside you remember has that uh, piece of uh, inch and a quarter square, and I probably won't be able to one-handedly get this in the right spot, but okay, you get the idea. Right here, it fits around that piece behind there, and then it'll weld to that plate right there, and that'll give me my outrigger that I need to secure the front bumper. Okay, so even though I'm only partially welded in because I can't get all the way around them until I take the whole thing back off uh, later on. Um, uh, this 090 tube, 090 wall tubing is welded in. And at the top, I just put a, um, this is a 065 wall 3 8 tubing, just to kind of triangulate it a little bit to keep it from, while it's, this is strong enough to hold it up, it still would have a tendency to vibrate and once you triangulate that it doesn't want to rattle against the fenders on the ends over here so um, also it's lightweight tubing so that if this should ever get you know god forbid smashed in the front these tubes are angled at an upward angle here so that it would push the rotate the bumper up before it starts to affect your uh, frame horns here so they don't get damaged and this being a lighter weight tube here this obviously would give uh, once this started to fold up and uh, so that's why I don't want to substantiate it with anything a little uh, any stouter than that but it, it does the job it triangulates it keeps it from rattling that's the main thing anyway on to the next thing 
Well, and then nothing goes as according to plan uh, department here. This uh, metal substructure here that the grill work works into turned out to be pretty distorted. I mean, to the point where I couldn't get anything to fit. <clears throat> it was starting to put stress on the plastic pieces. They were bowed up, bowed down, twisted in, twisted out. Finally, I decided the only thing for it, because I couldn't seem to straighten it out, was to just cut the whole structure apart, put the grill together, so that everything's sitting here relaxed, and then slowly I'm gonna piece it back together, back engineer it, so to speak, um, so that it complies to the grill. It's not stressing the grill out. Uh, I don't know how it got torqued like that, but um, yeah, the uh, the headlight doors were not operating the properly. These tabs were all twisted, uh, and this bottom piece was it was all out of shape so uh it's it's because it's uh, the shape is is going up and going down it's kind of hard to see until you get it all in there but once i got it in there it was like nothing was wanting to go anywhere and uh so like i said i'm drilling out the spot welds um freed up the uh, all the components now i'm going to slowly uh build it back in addition to that um, because of the way i've done the bumper assembly i'm going to have to be able to reach in and uh, down through here to put the bumper bolts in with that being the case um, I needed some extra clearance up here so I have to come back in here and reinforce this area over here so that it doesn't sag and uh, cut a little bit off of the uh, Challenger um, radiator core support nothing's nothing ex uh, nothing special just some plastic that's sticking in my way from getting my arms down in there so I'll be able to uh, tinker with the, any adjustments I have to make with the uh, the headlight doors or anything like that uh, It's all part of it uh, a little little backwards motion here today, but um, We're gonna go forward from here Okay, so um, I've added a uh, 3 8 of an inch uh, tubing 049 wall perimeter around this uh, entire section and then also uh tall profile of 70 thousandths right here in the area where the spring will be uh, to try and hopefully help lift the hood up a little bit so you can get your fingers underneath of it to re-strengthen after I did these cutouts over here and this cutout over here and this cutout over here hopefully it'll give me a little room to reach my arms in uh, and do any work that I have to do after the headlight buckets and everything are set in place because it's uh, pretty confined in there all right, I'm getting ready to put the uh, bumper mounts back into the bumper. Uh, painted them up, primed and painted them. I got some old uh, double stick tape that the backing won't peel off of anymore, which is perfect. It's about a 16th thick, and it's got a nice slick surface on it. This release paper won't come away now. And I'm just using that as a little pad between the chrome bumper and this so that the paint doesn't rub off from vibration, metal to metal, and, you know, cause some rust stains so hopefully it'll keep it nice and quiet too all right <clears throat> so that's what the uh, bumper looks like with the bumper brackets painted up and reinstalled um, those aren't the proper bumper bolts just yet but uh, they're coming anyway all right well that was like wrestling with a bear as far as getting that uh, that grill uh, substructure all straightened out and drill out all all of the spot welds, bend everything back into shape slowly, get it to conform with the uh, the plastic grill so it wasn't twerking everything out. And so uh, it's in there now. Got a few little adjustments to make, like lifting up this center here just a little bit. Um, but the doors work fine on your lift doors here. Um, and I was able to get the uh, the bumper mounted which was my biggest worry because of the way I have this configured and I, I did this extra cutout over here so that I could get my arm down in here and reach that that the pump bolts for the bumper bracket now I've got three bolts uh, I only was only able to get two in and once this uh, mounting platform for the uh, uh, linear actuators for the the uh, headlight doors goes in I probably won't be able to get my hands around there I might be able to get that from the uh, the wheel hole though we'll see about that 
I still have to make some brackets that tie the grill substructure to the fenders. There's, you know, two welded nuts in the uh, fenders on either side. There's a little L bracket that has little oblong holes in it that goes to there. And like I said, I've got to do a little bit more to support this top here because I no longer have that brace going top to bottom uh, here because of uh, how close it comes to the air conditioning condenser. So I've got to do something to make this a little bit more rigid. It's pretty rigid right now, but so I can put this spring in here. And hopefully it'll help to, help to uh, pop the hood up. I also had to cut this off a little short because the grill, I had to cut this out of the grill. This is the center mounting point so that I could get this piece. I'll have to weld, a, weld the handle on a little offset here to be able to reach it from the end of the, the hood here to release the hood. But, um, so anyways, uh, uh, I have to... Uh, now that all of that uh, looks like it's going to be all right, I'm going to uh, get over here and attach the fenders at the rear at the bottom and see how that all goes. Uh, this all, of course, has, like I said, come back off. And there's a little bit of uh, tweaking here and there with different things. But uh, it doesn't look too bad. So I've gone ahead and trimmed off these plastic mounts over here that normally uh, hold up the Challenger nose. I usually utilize these to uh, hold up some things, but uh, nothing, it's not necessary on this car, so they're just in the way, and they'll just, uh, when I neaten up, maybe make a cover here for this uh, latch tray. Um, it'll be a nice, uh, easy transition. These go uphill slightly like this to hold up the uh, front fascia on the Challenger, so it's always a task to try and get up and over these things, so away they go. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, something else that I'm doing over here that's unnecessary if you've got help. Um, I've got this uh, this little uh, clip that I put on here. This is simply for assembly. Now, I'm going to have to take these fenders on and off a couple more times uh, because of various things I have to do. But uh, so it's easy enough. It's, it's, it's nice to have something to just hook them on. Now, I have temporary pieces underneath that are already... Uh, uh, I've used to hook these fenders on, but I've, of course they have to I have to get rid of those Another thing I have here is this little rod here. That's Welded to there. That's just my little helper I just welded that so that I could hold it in place. It's an awkward spot here I couldn't get my fingers back here, and it's a small piece that I'm welded on so get my hands way out of the way And I'm able to hold it steady like that, and I'll just break this off and clean that up But this little hook here goes over this uh, permanent bracket over here you know so it's easy to line the front of it up I don't have anything in the back like that but if I could just feed it on one end I can probably drop the bolt in over there at the other end so you'll recall that I used 3 8 tubing around here to strengthen this up make this a little more stout here um, well that interfered with you can see the uh, headlight doors come up in this area so that 3 8 tubing along this edge over here interfered with that opening up so what I went ahead and did as I had some 70,000 steel I cut out the 3 8 tubing here and then I just put this flange bent over at an angle right here so now I've got uh, I've got the clearance for these to operate correctly it's still stiffened up the next thing I'm going to do is kind of neaten up this area here I have to create a, a pocket here for this uh, this lever to be able to fall into here but I don't need this all to be open here, so I'm just going to close this down and just kind of neaten this up a little bit here and fill this in with a little steel. All right, so I've got this, uh, I've got this kind of roughed in here. I won't bother to weld it all up uh, right now because I don't want to melt the uh, the, the uh, grill work because it's made out of plastic. Anyways, so. I offset this piece here, which is the handle that opens up this little hook here that releases the hood. So you can see I've got its, its notch to go around this little box. It's about an eighth inch above the, the bottom of this little floor here. This little floor is sitting pretty much on top of the gr uh, plastic grill. So this is just enough for this to work. And uh, that's it. Um, on to the next thing. All right, if you recall, um, I cut the bottom 
flange off the fenders that ties it to the rocker area and the reason I did that was both because my rocker's out quite a bit farther the pinch weld's out quite a bit farther than the stock charger so this doesn't go under quite as far and this would be very apparent uh, be very visually uh, objectionable at least to me so all I have is, is two holes drilled up through the bottom of the fender now and I've got these little flat plates with again capture nuts on the back side I'm bolting these right to the bottom of the fender and then I'm pushing it in setting the fender and welding them right to the car obviously it can be unbolted they're in slotted holes on the bottom side of the fender so this one fender is done it's time to go around to the other side it's now that this is locked in uh, you can see under here um, I'll probably have to weld it up a little bit better once I get the fender back off. This thing will actually ever focus here. I don't know what's going on with this. But you get the idea, even though it's blurry. Anyways, uh, on to the other side. And then uh, I think I'm going to call it for this week. Um, that was a struggle with that, uh, that grill without breaking it. I hate handling new parts when I'm trying to fabricate, but uh, it had to be done because we didn't have an old grill. We had uh, two buckets, but they were broken up, uh, but we didn't have the center section. So anyway, uh, I'll have to tear that back out of there, get it out of harm's way, and we'll go on from here. Uh, thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next time.